Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And look what just came in the mail. It's the uh, the managed switch. And if we take a closer look at this, it is a TP-Link switch, but um, it is a managed switch one. So it's the Jetstream 16 port gigabit L2 uh, managed switch. And uh, if you haven't watched my video on uh, a little bit how the internet works and what's this layer 2 thing, you should definitely check it out. It's right there linked in the card up, up above. So what is actually important for you guys to know here is that it is a layer 2 managed switch. It has 16 gigabit ports, which are more than enough to where this switch is headed. But um, the managed part is very important because it allows us to have these features right here uh, listed down below, which uh, you can see it's a layer 2 and layer 2 plus. So it can do a little bit of layer 3, not much. Uh, that's why it's not a full layer 3 switch, otherwise it would be very expensive. But uh, it has VLANs, it has uh, spanning tree, which is basically everything that we'll need on this switch and um, it has a couple of bit, a couple of security measures that we will eventually do some uh, quality of service as well which we'll eventually get into that but um, maybe I'll talk about those kind of stuff in a video somewhere in the future for now let's open up see what it's in the box and uh, then we'll configure it so we just open it up from down here and uh, Okay, not, not much to be honest. We have like the CD manual stuff, we don't care about that. We have a big manual. This wasn't uh, delivered in the previous versions. Okay, so this is, as you guys can see, no, let's not care about that. As you guys can see here, this is a rack mountable switch. Uh, you guys probably haven't seen my, uh, my rack video, but uh, I do have um, a rack uh, on like some storage area. Of the house uh, we will not rack mount these uh, but uh, it's nice to see that uh, we have the option if we need to and I was hoping that this would be like uh, command line documentation but uh, I guess not it doesn't matter we have an installation guide it's just another it looks like a smaller version of that yeah installation guide as well and uh, if we get up here Nothing here. We have a console cable. We will talk about what's the, the console in a second. This, um, it don't get yourself fooled by thinking this is an ethernet cable, it's not. On this hand, it's a serial port. We have a European power cable. Oh, I'm not thinking we will be using that. We have a USB cable, which can also be used to access the console. We'll see what we'll use on, um, on my computer. We have here on the bottom or on the side, we have the rack mount here and some uh, some footings that we'll probably use since we're not using this on the rack. That's nice. And then we have the, the switch itself. Let's get it out of the plastic real quick. There's the opening. Oh, right there. Okay, so uh, let's start by the back where there's not much going on. We have a, a grounding screw which we will not use and we have uh, um, a power a power connector as you can see there's not many ventilation on this switch this is a fanless switch it doesn't have any fans it will uh, automatically um, cool itself and then on the switch itself if we start from the left to the from the right to the left we have two SFP ports these are um, some special connector it's called SFP and uh, it's mostly used with fiber connection we're not using that at the moment, we'll see in the future if I will run fiber to my bedroom or not. Then we have the 16 ports, uh, they're all gigabit and um, right next to that we have the micro USB console port and the uh, RJ45 console port. The most used one is always the RJ45. Um, this is not the same as this, don't get confused. This is an ethernet port, this is a console port. This is the exact same thing as having the USB. Uh, in fact, both of these are exclusive. You cannot use them at the same time. We'll see what the console port is used for in a second. Then we just have some LEDs that indicate the state of the um, of the ports. And right on the left side, we have the, the switch model. So that's basically it. Uh, I'll see you guys when setting this up real quick. 
Okay guys, so uh, we're back. We have the switch right here. We have a, uh, a power cord connected uh, on the other side to, uh, to power. And uh, let's just uh, power it on real quick. And uh, as you can see, a power light came on. Now the switch will be uh, booting up, uh, like taking a minute or two to boot up. And um, we can't just uh, plug this into the network because uh, if this was a regular switch, uh, it's probably the ones you have uh, in your home, then it would be completely fine. You would just start uh, putting uh, plugging cables in and it would uh, magically work. But uh, this switch is managed. It has uh, an IP where we can access it um, it has a configuration that must be done on the ports. Uh, there is something called VLANs that we haven't delved much uh, into, but just think as VLANs, the, the concept of it is a virtual LAN. That's what it stands for. And it basically means uh, separating the switch. Imagine that I put these first eight ports, I put it on one VLAN, and these other eight ports, I put it on the other VLAN. So I would basically have two switches. This side would be a switch, that side would be a switch, and they would not communicate. Um, they would not be able to communicate without a router to do the, the forwarding on layer 3. Uh, I use that a lot in my home. I have uh, plenty of VLANs for uh, like things like IoT devices, like the normal internet access. My servers are on different VLANs, so um, I'll show you guys how to configure that in a second. Let's just wait for it to boot up. And um, we will be using this uh, console port. It's the exact same thing as, uh, as the one that came, but this one is what I use at work. Uh, it has a USB on one side, and it has the, uh, the RJ45 on the other side. So let's see if my personal computer doesn't complain about drivers or something. And uh, let's connect it up. So let me just uh, get this cable free. And we take the, um, the RJ45. We don't connect it to any of these ports, we connect it to the console port. This is not an Ethernet cable, remember? And uh, I'll see you guys on the computer now.